Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm not going to check the Ishin E52 or the E56 or the E57. I'm going to check the Ishin E58 which is the latest quadcopter in the Ishin E-series pocket drones. As I can already see on the box, this quadcopter resembles the DJI Mavic and they are not ashamed of it. They designed it to be like a mini clone of the DJI Mavic, but of course it is nothing like it. So don't expect to get a mini Mavic or something like that, just to let you know. And of course you can't expect a $50 quadcopter to be in the same quality of a $1,000 quadcopter. So let's open the box and see everything we're getting inside. Inside the box we're getting the user manual which comes in six languages English, Deutsch, French, Italiano, Spanish and simplified Chinese. A bag with a USB to micro USB cable, a screwdriver and one set of spare propellers. The quadcopter, the remote controller which you can see also resembles the remote controller of the DJI Mavic and finally depending on the package that you bought, extra batteries. I have the one with three extra batteries because one is also included in the quadcopter. You can choose to get one, two or three batteries in total. The included batteries are 1S 500mAh LiPo batteries. And in order to charge them, all you have to do, just plug the micro USB connector of your cable or the one that is included to the micro USB port on the battery. A LED indicator will be turned on over here. And once the charging process is finished, which will take roughly about an hour, the LED indicator will be turned off. In order to power up the remote controller, you will have to provide your own three AA batteries. And then you can power it on by just moving the switch over here to the right. So let's go through all the functions of the remote controller. On the top we've got these antennas which I'm not really sure they are connected to something so I plan to later on in this video disassemble the remote controller just to see how it looks on the inside. On the top left we've got the headless mode button. Once we press it the quadcopter will enter headless mode. If you want to stop it just press it again. This button also double acts as the return to home button. If you want to initiate the return to home, just long press it. It's going to play this annoying sound and then it's going to get back to you. Then if you press it again, it's going to stop the return to home procedure, but it's going to enter headless mode. Remember, this is not a GPS quadcopter, so it's not accurate and don't expect it to come back on its own without any problems. I'm going to test it when I'm going to take it outdoors. The next button is the photo video button, which is located here. When you press it once, a photo will be snapped into the SD card that is located here on the quadcopter. We're gonna get to it in a moment. And if you long press this button, it's going to start recording video. And if you want to stop the recording video procedure, just long press it again and the recording will be stopped. On the left and on the right, we have the right stick trim buttons. When it's centered, you're gonna hear a long beep. And over here, we have the trim buttons for the pitch again. When it's self-centered, you will hear a longer beep. The next two buttons are the one key takeoff and land buttons. When you want to take off, just press this button and then the quadcopter is going to hover on about one meter height. Just press this button and the quadcopter is going to land itself. The last buttons are the flip buttons, which is located here. So in order to perform a flip, you will have probably to press it and then tilt it to the direction of your choice. I haven't tested it yet, so I need to test it. And the last button is the speed switch. You have three options. The slowest one will be indicated by one beep, the medium by two beeps, and the fastest mode is going to be indicated by three beeps. In order to recalibrate the quadcopter, just hold these sticks to the bottom right, and then the quadcopter is going to calibrate itself. On the bottom of the remote controller, we have this slot that will enable you to accommodate your phone. My Galaxy S8 Plus could barely fit inside, so I think it can accommodate phones with up to six inch screen, of course, depending on the side of your cover as well. Now let's take a look on the quadcopter. Unfolding the quadcopter is done by first unfolding the front two arms, then unfold the back arms. On the top, we've got the on and off switch. In order to turn it on, just long press it for about Two seconds and then it's going to turn itself. On the back we've got a LED indicator and also two LED indicators on the front. Now it's flashing because the remote controller is not connected. On the front we've got the camera. When you buy this quadcopter you have two options. You can buy a 2 megapixels camera or 0 0.3 megapixels camera which is a little bit cheaper and the one I've got is the 2 megapixels camera. 
Over here we can find the micro SD card. It can support up to eight gigabytes of SD cards. And over here we've got the Wi-Fi antenna. In order to turn off the quadcopter, you have to long press this button again for another second or so, and then it will be turned off. And in order to extract the battery, just pull it like that and then you can change it with another battery. The weight of the Ishin E58 is 94.3 grams and for example the E56 weighs 85.5 grams and the Ishin E52 weighs 86.5 grams so the Ishin E58 is the heaviest quadcopter in the Ishin E series quadcopters. Now I forgot to show earlier when I, in I unboxed the contents of the box that you also get these propeller guards in order to use them you don't have to use any screws just slide it on the bottom of each arm and it looks pretty stable and I think it's a pretty convenient way of using the propeller guards. They are pretty light and they add only extra 4 point grams to the total weight of the quadcopter but in my test outdoors I'm not going to use them anyway. Like the rest of the Ishin E-Series quadcopters, the Ishin E58 can be controlled also by an app through its Wi-Fi module. So in order to control it, you will have to download the JYUFO app, either from the App Store or from the Google Play. Then after you finished downloading the app, just turn on the quadcopter. Then you will have to connect to its Wi-Fi network. So you can see we have the Wi-Fi 720p. It takes about 20 seconds after you turn on the quadcopter for the Wi-Fi network to be discoverable. So then just connect to it, it's not secured with any password of any sort. After it's going to be connected, just open the app, then hit play, and you can see that we see in the picture, and the picture quality is actually not bad at all, but like all the Wi-Fi enabled quadcopters, it's not so convenient to fly at FPV because the delay is noticeable, and as you're getting far from your device, it will only get worse. So over here we have the normal control buttons, we can turn on and off, the navigation switches. We can use the gyro in order to control the movement of the quadcopter. We can set the rate between 30, 60 and 100% which is the highest. We can start to record video on the device itself. This is not the button that will enable recording on the SD card of the quadcopter and you can also take a snapshot by pressing this button over here and again the photo is going to be saved to the device. In order to take off and land you will have to press this button and then you will have to press this button and then it's going to take off and if you want to perform an emergency stop just press the stop button. In addition you have this microphone button that will enable you to control the quadcopter with your voice where when you press it you can initiate a voice command you can say forward backward left side or right side and then it's going to be controlled I'm not sure if I'm going to test it in this video that we'll see later on when I'll take it outdoors. Now as I told you in the beginning of the video I was curious and I had to disassemble the remote controller in order to find if the antennas are connected and they're not these are just dummy antennas so don't think that if you're gonna alter their position you're gonna get a better range however if you want to get a better range maybe a good modification will be to extend the antenna and then maybe you will be able to achieve a better range next thing I'm gonna do I'm going to charge the three batteries and take it outdoors for a test flight okay so luckily we have a nice weather today I just turned on the quadcopter I've connected it to the app let me just start the screen recording and you can see that it's working and in order to bind the remote controller just turn it on and then move the left stick all the way up and down now it's bound and when we want to take off just press this button and you can see it is working there is a little bit of wind and it's trying struggling to fight it and I will need to move to faster mode by pressing this button and now I am on the fastest mode still it's a little bit struggling the breeze is pretty light but still it's struggling to fight it and it's drifting still the flat quadcopter flies pretty nice it feels powerful although it's drifting it maintains its height pretty nicely let's try the flip button in order to flip it you will have to press this button over here and then just turn the right stick to the direction you want to flip to it works only on the right and left now by the way if you want to record the video the app has to be connected otherwise it's not going to work and when you short press this button it's going to snap a picture and if you long press it now it's taking videos and by the way 
you can see that the front lights are flashing now the wind stopped so we can see it's it's uh, stand still pretty nicely so now it's taking a video and if you want to stop it long press this button and now it's going to stop you can see the led indicators stop flashing let's try headless mode so in order to turn it on just press this button once and now the quadcopter is in headless mode you can see it also flashes twice rapidly and you can see it's still connected let's check its range now it's going getting back to me i lost control so the range is less is about 30 meters or so because when when i got disconnected it just didn't respond let's try it again Oh, it's not responding and when it got disconnected it just turned to uh, it just returned to home you can also initiate return to home by long pressing this button let's see what happens so you see it now returns to the direction where you flew from it's not gps and it's not accurate you can see let's see again now it's let's initiate the return to home again let's see now it just landed so let's pick it up okay so i just put a new battery inside and now i'm going to test how long we can fly it for so let's start it up and just fly it around So it just landed itself after about seven minutes of flight time and I flew it a little bit aggressively in the wind. So let's get back home and see the footage and I'm going to take it again for a test flight and record the HD video on the SD card because the other one was faulty. So let's take it for a ride.
So overall the E58 flew quite nicely and I think this is probably the best quadcopter you can get right now from the Ishin E series. It is not expensive and I think that it's suitable for a beginner who wants to practice flying. However, it's not very suitable for FPV. You could see that the FPV was in delay and I plan to modify this quadcopter to accommodate a 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter and also modify the remote controller in order to extend its range and then maybe it's going to be a better quadcopter for FPV. The footage that was recorded to the SD card is not of high definition and it's not 720p so you won't be able to produce high quality videos but it is a nice feature to have and I think that the video quality is above average and better than other toy grade quadcopters that I've seen. The battery is proprietary so I think that if you decide to get this quadcopter get the one with the three batteries because it doesn't cost you a lot and you're gonna have three batteries so you can have a total flight time of about 20 minutes which is decent enough so you can take it outdoors and practice flying without having the need to go back home and recharge the batteries. Now, I've got a small treat for you. I'm going to give away two of these quadcopters, one over here on YouTube. All you have to do, just subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, like this video and leave a comment down below and you're going to be included in the draw. I'm going to reveal the winner in the next month or so. So stay tuned and watch my videos and I will tell you when the winner is going to be revealed. The other quadcopter is going to be given away on my Facebook page. I'm going to put a link down below so you can enter twice. One to win the quadcopter over here on YouTube and the second one on my Facebook page. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. Feel free to ask any question about this quadcopter and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.